Thank you. Uh, so this talk is about what I did with John Leo at the last Hyper meeting, which took place in Tokyo in March. Uh, most of the hard work was done by John, just to make sure. <laughs> so, in music theory, we have composition rules for making music sound good. Whereas in type theory, we have typing rules for making programs uh, meaningful. So this similarity has inspired a new paradigm of music composition, where uh, music rules are encoded as types, and violation of those rules are recorded as type errors. Thus we obtain the guarantee that well-typed music doesn't sound wrong, just like well-typed programs cannot go wrong. Okay? So in the past few years, uh, we've seen some attempts at typed music composition, and interestingly, it turns out that the standard simple type system is not powerful enough for encoding music rules. We often need some form of dependent types. If you are not familiar with dependent types, uh, they are just types that depend on terms. The classical example of dependent types is the index vector type here. So this type tells us how many elements a vector has. Using this type, we can implement a safe extraction function that cannot fail at runtime. The idea is to require the uh, index argument to be no greater than the length of the vector argument. Then, if we try to extract the second element of a singleton vector, then the, the type checker will complain that the index argument doesn't have the correct type. So using dependent types, we can detect more invalid uses of functions. So what kind of dependent types do we need in, in music? Actually, the vector type we've just seen is already such an example. Uh, we can use this type to force uh, parallel voices to have the same length. Another example is data types that are indexed by a mode. Uh, this can be useful for uh, phrase composition because we have to follow different rules uh, in major and minor mode. So, so far, type music composition has been actively studied in the Haskell community. And since Haskell doesn't really have dependent types, uh, these index types have been simulated by some other means, like singleton types or GVPs. While this simulation works, uh, this sometimes makes the implementation less elegant by uh, duplicating, duplicating certain pieces of code. So this motivated us to try using a dependently typed language for music composition. In this talk, I'm going to show you a dependently typed implementation of first thesis counterpoint. The implementation is in ACTA, a programming language with full dependent types, and it uses the music tools library, uh, which is developed by John. The library provides some uh, useful primitives like pitch and notes, and for MIDI generation, it uses uh, Haskell functions through the Fourier function interface. I'm not going to detail the library itself, and uh, focus on the counterpoint application in this talk. So what is counterpoint? Counterpoint is a technique for uh, combining uh, harmonically interdependent uh, voices. Here's an example. So we start with a canvas formas, which is the bass melody, and construct a counterpoint line either above or below the canvas forms. In this example, we see that every note is a whole note, which is uh, one of the characteristics of first thesis counterpoint. When composing counterpoint, there are two important functions. One of them is intervals. An interval represents the difference between two notes. 
uh, among different intervals, uh, fifth and octave are called perfect. And for most of the imperfect intervals, we have a major and minor variants. The notion of intervals is important because not all intervals are allowed in first basis uh, counterpoint. We can only use uh, consonant intervals, which are third, uh, fifth, sixth, and octave. Uh, the reason is that um, other intervals called dissonant um, are not pleasing to human ears. To disallow uses of dissonant intervals, we define a data type interval quality which enumerates all the consonant intervals. And using this type, we uh, represent each measure of the counterpoint music as a pair of a pitch and an interval. The pitch part corresponds to one note in the counterperformance, and the interval part uh, tells us the distance between the counterperformance note and the counterpoint note. And then we represent the whole music as a sequence of pitch interval pairs. The other important notion in counterpoint construction is motion. Motion describes how one interval moves to another interval. So there are four kinds of motion, and we can, we can find all of them in the example here. The first motion is called contrary. We see that one melody goes up and the other goes down. And the second one is called similar motion. This time, the two voices go in the same uh, direction. And the third motion is a parallel motion, which is a special case of similar motion where the two voices move by the same distance. And lastly, we have oblique motion where the one of the two voices stay the same. Like intervals, we have a rule that constrains the use of motion. So we are not allowed to approach a perfect interval by similar or parallel motion. This is because such motion will uh, draw too much attention to the resulting perfect interval. To constrain motion, we define a predicate motion OK. So this predicate is a function that takes in two intervals and returns a type representing either truth or falsity. The definition is pretty straightforward. If the motion is contrary or oblique, then we can uh, immediately conclude that the predicate holds. And if it is parallel or similar, uh, we check if the second interval is perfect or not. Other than these rules, uh, we have one more rule that tells us how to form a valid ending, which says um, we must approach the final interval by contrary stepwise motion. Um, here we assume that every music ends with an uh, octave, so we have two possibilities. We can approach the, uh, the perfect uh, the octave from either major six or minor tenth. These two intervals both have a strong goal orientation, so they form a very uh, smooth ending. In our implementation, we hard code this uh, constraint on ending in the first species data type. So this data type is inhabited by uh, sequences of pitch interval pairs. And it is a dependent type. It has an index that tells us what the first element of the sequence is. Um, I'll show you this, how to use this index in a moment. So this first species data type has two base constructors. Um, these constructors correspond to the two possible forms of ending. 
uh, we see that the resulting types are indexed by the two intervals that can come right before the final of the. And the extension constructor uh, takes care of motion. It checks if the <coughs> new interval, pi, and the next one, pj, form a valid motion using the motion of k predicate. The point here is that the, the interval pj comes from the type of the music we are extending. And the new interval pi goes to the, the type of the music after extension. And one more thing I want to note here is that the motion OK uh, argument is an implicit one. So we don't need to manually supply this proof term. OK, so now we can check the validity of a handwritten counterpoint by turning the music into the first species dead type. So let's look at an example. You want some? Yes. Oh, yeah, I think I can just use this. That one didn't work when we tried it earlier, so she's going to hold the microphone. Okay. Right. So in this example, we use this melody as the canvas format. How many of you are familiar with this? One? Oh, there are many. Mm. So, um, this is a piece of music that you can hear uh, at train, several train stations in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> I slightly modified the ending so that it serves as a counterformance. And I, I'm also not using the whole note because otherwise the music will be too slow. And I constructed a counterpoint line for this transformers, which sounds like this. So does this counterpoint uh, satisfies all the required rules? We can ask Agda. <laughs> <laughs> So here is an Agda representation of our counterpoint music. It is encoded as a first species dead type, indexed by the, the first interval, which is an octave. Um, it is too small, but all we have to do is to run the Agda type checker to see <laughs> if this is correct or not. <laughs> So let's try running the type checker. It takes a few seconds. <laughs> okay, it type checks. <laughs> so let's see how this sounds. super useful <laughs> because um, every time I broke some rule, it immediately reported that, that error to me. So um, we have formalized this uh, first thesis counterpoint in ACTA, and what we plan to do next is to extend this implementation to higher species counterpoint. For instance, in the case of second species counterpoint, uh, the counterpoint line moves in half notes, so we have more notes in the counter, uh, counterpoint line, 
and we are also allowed to use dissonant intervals on weak beats. A more challenging extension will be to automatically generate counterpoint. In particular, we, are, uh, we would like to generate counterpoint that is not only well typed, but uh, interesting and natural sounding as well. So there are a few tips for uh, making good counterpoint. For instance, we are encouraged to use contrary motion or imperfect intervals, but not leaves or repeats. So our implementation is available on GitHub, and I strongly recommend that you construct uh, your own counterpoint and see if it type checks. Thank you. Now we know that even Agda is a cool language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you're Which one? there. Okay. Um, okay, suppose I write my counterpoint in Agda using this thing. Can I, is this, is there a nice tool I can use to then turn that tune into? Hmm? Can you say anything? If I write my counterpoint in Agda, yeah. is there a nice tool I can use to convert that into, say, lily pond notation? Or a file or something like that. Oh, so our, our uh, app implementation does support MIDI gen generation using Haskell functions. Cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. This, uh, please. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so your your type, your data type for representing uh, this uh, first uh, first species. First species. Yeah. Yes. So it, it doesn't seem to support concatenation. Right, because you only you know the first information about the first step, so you can't put, you can't build sequences from smaller parts. Has this been a problem mm -hmm. in practice? And Concatenation. Yeah. Uh, but we have extension constructor. Yeah, but that's yeah, but one by one. But you can't put together two. Because in order to check, if you can put together two sequences. But it would it would be partial con concatenation. And the end of the the end of the first one, the beginning of the second, one, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the type that only the only the beginning of the second one is showing up in the type, the end of the first one. Oh, that's uh, necessarily no. Actually, it's not necessarily the thing. But what is the the end of the first? No, there is no empty thing. Is it always ends in a? There is no empty thing. Oh, I okay. So, so, so th th this shows that if you want to, to be a good uh, Agda programmer, you should do music with it, and plenty of very interesting pro interesting questions will, will arise. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're set up with this question. Uh, one year uh, from the... Okay, I missed it. Uh, can you show us an example of a useful type error generated when the rules are violated? So can you... Can you break it? Okay. You have a type error, and, and how yes. can you use the, the, uh, the error message to eventually solve it? Yeah, so um, the most frequent errors was... Can you just show it, on the uh, example, changing one note, violating your rules, yeah. and to see what's the, okay. the help of Agda uh, making counterpoint? So... So this is our correct counterpoint, yes. right? And we can try making some uh, parallel or similar motion that approaches are a perfect interval. For instance, if we put this here, um, the bo both line goes up, but the resulting interval is um, perfect. Also. Yes, uh, and what Agda will say. Yes. Um, I have to find where this <laughs> is <laughs> in the <laughs> Oh, maybe I can just change this one. This is now not going to receive. 
Liksom också den. Um, so it says Yeah, so the implicit uh, motion OK argument uh, will be automatically generated by ACTA, but in this case, we can't, we, we are not sure what the proof will be. It's actually decidable. Yeah, it's decidable, so if you can use. You can use. Oh. I mean, you're just, so you're, just, you're just quibbling about what color the time check should show up. I think it showing up any color is useful, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is perhaps related with another question we have on Slido, uh, which is, uh, uh, so have you tried to generate a random counterpoint from the system and valid counterpoint from the system? Random counterpoint? Yeah, so here what you said is that yeah, you were I writing it by hand yes, and checking yes, with yes. the... Yeah, that's future work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we, we still have some time for questions because... Uh, you was uh, quite fast. Uh, extra, Ken? Uh, extra motivation for generating random counterpoint. Um, it feels like when you write your counterpoint by hand, you're following rules that are not in 